The cosmological argument is actually a family of arguments, different arguments, that all attempt to prove on the basis of the existence of the world that there is some sort of a first cause or sufficient reason for the existence of the world. And what are some of the subsets of these arguments? Well, for example, there's the so-called argument from contingency uh, that has been defended by various philosophers such as uh, Leibniz and others. And it would go something like this. Anything that exists has uh, a reason or an explanation of its existence, either in the necessity of its own nature or in some external cause. Now, if the universe has an explanation of its existence, that explanation would be God, a transcendent being beyond space and time. The universe is something that exists, obviously, and therefore it would follow that the universe has an explanation of its existence uh, and that that explanation is God. That would be a kind of quick and easy summary of the basic premises of the contingency argument. And then one would need to talk about why one believes those premises Are there to be some true. other cosmological arguments? Yes. Uh, another version would be uh, the argument uh, for a first temporal cause of the universe. And it, it's uh, very simple. It would go like this. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. And that would be an argument, again, for a transcendent creator of the universe. And uh, how have these arguments uh, fared through their, mm -hmm. through their intellectual history? Through their intellectual history, they've been defended by some of the greatest minds of the Western world. They fell into disfavor during the Enlightenment with the critiques of David Hume and Immanuel Kant. But during the 20th century, these arguments have uh, resurfaced with enormous vigor, such that today, among the finest philosophers in the English-speaking world, you will find sophisticated defenders of all of these traditional arguments for God's existence. So we're really living at, at a time which is enjoying something of a renaissance of natural theology. And with the cosmological argument has some of the cosmological data mm. from the world of science, the Hubble telescope, uh, been helpful or contradictory? Oh, it's been very helpful. I, uh, you see, during the Middle Ages, when there was no scientific evidence, for example, for a beginning of the universe, uh, philosophers presented purely philosophical arguments against the infinity of the past or an infinite regress of causes. But with the advent of modern astrophysical cosmology, it turns out that there is very good empirical evidence for the truth of the premise that the universe is not a necessarily existing being, but is contingent in a radical way, namely that it began to exist. So we have both philosophical arguments and scientific confirmation of the key premise of that second version of the cosmological argument.